How's it going, everybody? Welcome tonight to Jesse and Gabby's Friday Night Bible Study. And surprise, his little sister is here tonight. And um, I'm here because um, I want to be able to spend some time with you guys as well and to engage and worship with you tonight. My brother invited me here tonight, and I am more than blessed and honored to do so. But before we get started with the worship this evening, I want to encourage you and I want to ask you right now, to find a space or a place in your home. Maybe you've already strategized it this way, and if you have, awesome. If not, I wanna ask you though to pull away, to get all the distractions out of the way, find a space and a place in your home where you can just sit, maybe on your couch, in your bedroom, on your bed. Um, I don't know, maybe even as a family, maybe you have children, you have a spouse. Find a place or a space right now where you guys can just be together as we begin to engage into some worship and then open up our hearts to receive what God has to say to us tonight. Now I know um, there's a lot going on in our world and we're all feeling this, this tugging and there's just, you know, um, this overwhelming feeling. But we know if we are believers tonight, we know what our source is and who our source is tonight. It is found in Jesus Christ. So we're going to plug in tonight. We're going to engage in some worship. And then we're going to get into the word of God so we can be encouraged, we can be uplifted, we can be inspired by his truth so that we can carry on as we continue to push forward. So I know you guys know these songs. Um, we're going to use all the technology that we have today, you guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up the phone right now and we're going to get right into it. And if you guys know this song, the song is entitled In the River, I want to ask you guys from your homes to sing with us this first song there is a river that includes you too gabby and jesse <laughs> all right here we go guys oh thank you father there is freedom in worshiping you father there is freedom in lifting your name up there is freedom in your presence there is a river where goodness flows there is a fountain that drowns sorrows, there is an ocean deeper than the fear. The tide is rising, rising. There is a current stirring deep inside, it's overflowing from the heart of God. The flood of heaven crashing over us, the tide is rising, rising, and bursting. bursting up from the ground we feel it now and bursting bursting up from the ground we feel it now we come alive in the river 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 deep inside it's overflowing from the heart of god the flood of heaven crashing over us the tide is rising rising and bursting bursting up from the ground we feel it now bursting bursting up from the ground we feel we come alive in the river. 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 
presence and a, and a feeling and also liberty where your presence is, Lord, and we thank you for that today. You know, I don't know if, um, if you've had a rough day today. I know many of us, like I said, with this whole COVID thing, it's, it's so overwhelming, but there is a sense of peace when we just enter into the presence of God. And if you are with us tonight on this live feed, you are in the right place. God has a message for both you and I tonight. I sensed it even as I was driving here to my brother's home tonight. The presence of God was already over me and, and ministering to me in my car as I was driving. And I was just having um, just a personal intimate moment with the Lord and just sensing his presence and his comfort. Because yes, it can be and it does feel so overwhelming at times, you guys. This is a burden that none of us could bear, but we it wasn't intended for you and I to bear it. That is why Christ went to the cross. He died for this COVID situation. He died for every sin and transgression that you and I have done. And even what is to come in the future, he already saw it. He already, he already knew it. He already knew it before it even ever existed. And for that reason, he knew I have to go to the cross. My blood must be shed so that Vanessa can be forgiven, so Jesse can be forgiven, so that... Gabby can be forgiven and put your name in that blank right there so that you can be forgiven tonight. We're going to jump right into this next song. We were going to do one more, but, but I want to jump right directly into this song. And I want to share with you as, as the music is playing very briefly, because I'm going to ask you to participate tonight. I, um, I did a rendition of this song. Pardon me? <laughs> I did a, a rendition of this song, and I want to share with you something that that, um, that I felt like the Holy Spirit was showing me as I was singing the song. And I want to pass this message on to you right now as you also begin to proclaim the song, as you begin to sing it yourself in your homes. But as I was singing it, I started to literally see faces. And some of you that are watching this feed tonight, some of your faces came to mind as I began to sing the song. And... The Holy Spirit was showing me as I was seeing all of your faces that I was believing in agreement with you that this blessing would be poured out upon you and your family as well. Not just upon me and my daughter, my mother, my siblings, my nephews and my nieces, but to extend that even further to the body of Christ, to, to other friends, to ex extended family members as well. And so what I want to ask you to do right now is I want to ask you if, you if you're in that quiet place right now, I want to ask you to just... Um, allow your mind to just uh, begin to think about family and friends and even maybe visualizing their faces in your mind as you begin to sing the song that you be also begin to proclaim this song for those individuals that you are seeing right now because this is this is a prayer it's worship but it's also a prayer and tonight we are going to proclaim that together for one another and for others there is power in, in prayer, there's power in worship, there's power in coming together as a body of believers. So let us, let us believe tonight together. I'm believing with you, believe with me as we sing this beautiful song that came directly from scripture. And the song of course is entitled, The Blessing. Let's continue to stay in that attitude of worship and praise. believe this tonight together.
hands face toward you and give you peace. And He is for you. He is 
into communicating with you and connecting with you and being intimate with you with our thoughts our emotions with what even our body is experiencing physically whether we're not feeling well or just feeling fatigued and tired but we can tap into you we can connect with you and you are there you're listening and your heart is for us father your heart is for us your heart desires to merge and to connect with us you want to be like this with us so tonight as we open up your word, Father, we want to just be sensitive to what your word, what it is saying to us and how we receive it tonight, that we would receive it with gladness, that we would go into your word with excitement and zeal because it is our spiritual food to strengthen us, to build us. So Father, we open up our hearts tonight. We thank you, Father. Now, if you're there with family or you have some, you know, friends that are there with you right now, as we're getting ready to go into the next part of the study group, you know, why don't you hug somebody, <laughs> say hi to someone that you're there with, and, and, and you know, take a, take a moment there um, as uh, Jesse gets prepared to, to come up here and uh, to share the study tonight. Thank you for allowing me to be with you guys. Um, Bible study. Uh, glad that you have tuned in with us. Um, nothing like um, being in the presence of the Lord. And so, um, in a few moments, we're going to pray um, for uh, maybe some of your needs, um, some needs that we know that we have. So, if there's anything that uh, you want prayer for, um, just message it in, you know, through, through the through the link tonight, um, through Facebook, whatever it is, and um, just voice it out there, you know, if it's something private you don't want no one to know, then um, just in your own heart, you know, as we go before the Lord in a few moments here, um, we want to continue to pray for the needs um, that we know uh, that we have. That's why we have these home groups um, for that time of intimacy. Normally we go around the room and we take up prayer requests, and uh, there's that, um, that, that, that bond, that uh, brother and sisterhood um, that we have when we're here together, and uh, we don't want to lose that. Um, we want um, you guys to know we love you. And uh, we know that you love us, and uh, we miss you dearly. And um, pretty soon, um, all this is going to be over. Don't think that this is going to be the norm. Um, this isn't. This is just but for a season. And so take advantage of what you need to um, during this season. Um, uh, look for the benefits in this season. And grab a hold of those things. I um, also wanted to um, remind you, I hope that you're all uh, tuning in to your... Um, 
your home churches on your Park Praise Chapel. Um, you do remember we did take up a, um, a building fund um, just before this uh, virus came out. And so we, uh, on the building fund by faith, um, you know, um, the, the membership had written on an envelope um, what they were going to pledge to give uh, before the, the time frame. And so I just encourage you, um, trust the Lord in that. Um, don't look at things in the natural, um, but trust the Lord. And uh, know that um, God is your provider, and He's going to meet every need. Uh, amen. If you do need to get uh, physical money to the church or envelopes, me and my wife, those of you that are in our study group, um, you guys can connect with us if that's something you need to do. So just message us and we will definitely um, take care of that for you. Uh, so tonight um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, pray tonight. I um, want to continue to pray um, for my wife's cousin, Tail Praslin, um, who's currently uh, still in the um, ICU um, dealing with the coronavirus. Um, the doctor's report is... Um, Optim cautiously optimistic and so things are, are, are looking good but like I said last week um, we're praying till the victory and so that's exactly what we're going to do and we will give you the praise report um, uh, when we get the praise report. I uh, also want to lift up a, a brother of mine named uh, Jesse, brother in the Lord um, who lost a sister um, due to the coronavirus I spoke with him earlier today and just want to pray for the family over there just for God's comfort, God's peace you know on um, that, uh, that that whole situation, amen, and whatever your needs uh, might be tonight, amen, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go uh, before the Lord tonight, we're going to lift up those needs and whatever your needs are tonight, and uh, pray for just tonight's service, just for God to have his way, and uh, that the Holy Spirit would just move upon our hearts. Father, we come before you, Lord, tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, um, that we are still able to um, to communicate and to connect, Father, even if we're not physically together. Uh, we thank you, that, Lord, that we are able, um, with the use of technology, to still um, connect here on this Friday night, Lord. And so, Lord, we want to lift up every need tonight, Father. I want to lift up um, Teo tonight, God. And, and I just pray that, Lord God, that you would continue and, and move miraculously, God, that you would continue and heal his body, God. I, we just pray, Lord, for just favorable reports every day moving forward, Lord God. We pray for the family, God. We pray for the team of doctors and everybody that's involved in the care of him, Lord God. We pray for your wisdom upon them. Father, we want to lift up every need, God, that is represented here with this group here tonight. And Maybe there's some, Lord, that are sick in body. And maybe yes. there's some, Lord, that are standing in the gap and praying for family members. Maybe there are some, Lord, that are battling with addictions and, and maybe some, Lord God, that are that are just struggling with oppression and depression, Lord, because of the times that are at hand. Father, we just pray tonight that your peace, God, yes, Father, yes. So that your peace, God, breathe upon them, Lord, for Holy Spirit, we know that when your touch comes, oh, that nothing, nothing, Lord, is greater than the touch of the Holy Spirit upon our life. And so, Father, we commit these prayers to you tonight, Lord. Yes, Lord. We love you. We honor you. We bless you. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter number 2. Book of Mark, chapter number 2. And uh, verses 1 through 12. Mark chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 12, and so the title of the message tonight is Jesus in the house. Is he in your house? And so tonight, Book of Mark, chapter 2, I'm going to read verses 1 through 12, and then we're going to just get into the word and, uh, and just get um, encouraged uh, by the word of the Lord. And so the Bible says this, And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together, so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them, 
Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. Now when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sons are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason among these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. So tonight, seeing how we are not able to gather together for this period, it just seems appropriate to talk about having Jesus in the house. And so just because the churches aren't opened and should not stop us from having relationship and having Jesus in our house. This story found here in the book of Mark opens up by saying this, And again he entered Capernaum after some days he was in the house and so it says now again he had entered Capernaum thus signifying that he had already been there and so it's important for me to lay out a little bit of foundation in chapter number one for us to understand the urgency of the four men carrying the paralyzed man and how we look into scripture and we can see that Jesus had previously already been in the house and he's coming back now and he's entering into the house again. The story found here in the book of Mark, we're in chapter 2, but in chapter number 1, it talks about the beginning of his ministry. And it talks about the calling of the first disciples, Peter and Andrew and James and John. Now, Jesus is walking along the sea shore, and he calls these men, and he's bringing them to be his disciples. And so the Bible says in chapter number 1 that he took these four disciples and that he walked and he entered into the synagogue. This was the beginning of his earthly ministry. And the Bible says that he walks into the synagogue in Capernaum, the very place that we just talked about opening up in chapter number 2, and that he <clears throat> walks into the synagogue and he begins to teach. And in this process of him teaching, he begins to deal with a man who's afflicted in the synagogue at that time. And the Bible says that Jesus is there and he is ministering to this man and, and, and he begins to, 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 to deliver him by his power. And then the Bible says, they walked away from the synagogue and they entered into Simon Peter's house, which is in Capernaum, which is the very same house that Jesus returns to in our story found here in Mark chapter number 2. And if you read the account 
in Mark chapter number 1, you begin to understand that he walks into the house and the Bible says that Peter's mother-in-law was sick with a fever. And so Jesus does something quite different according to the religious standards of this day. He took the ministry out of the synagogue and he brought it into the house. And that's what we do here today. That's what we've been doing. And that's what we're expecting you to do at home. Is to no longer always count and rely on what am I going to do when the building of the church isn't open, but to understand that Jesus wants to be in your house. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so the Bible says this in Mark chapter number 1, that after Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law, in chapter 1, verse 32, it says that the whole city was at the door. The whole city was at the door. So the same house that we're talking about in Mark chapter 2 is the same one in the previous chapter that the whole city, the Bible says, was at the door. And so they had heard about the power of Jesus. They, they have heard him proclaim the word of God. They have known about his miracles. And so it makes me to kind of think a little bit and wonder. Now this isn't in scripture and what I'm about to say isn't blasphemous or heresy of any form. But I just wonder if these same four men He secludes himself and he comes to his disciples and he tells them, let's, let's go amongst Galilee and let's begin to preach the gospel. And so the Bible says that he goes about his earthly ministry and he continues to proclaim and preach the word of God, heal the sick and forgive sins. And then it brings us to the story that I want to look at here tonight found in Mark chapter number 2. So after all this had taken place and Jesus was away from Capernaum, the Bible says in chapter 2 verse 1, and again now he's coming back into Capernaum after some days and it was heard that he was in the house. And so I want to ask you tonight, do you have Jesus in the house? Immediately, the Bible says, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. There's no doubt that Jesus is preaching a message of hope and life. That he was meeting the people. That he was mending broken hearts. That he was encouraging those that were discouraged. The house was full because the spreading of what Jesus done why is it not getting the attention of people that our churches are overwhelmed and packed 
that there's no room to enter in. There were people packed in this house, around the doors, filled all the way around the yard. And the Bible says that they were listening to the preaching of the Word. The matter is, is give me the word. Just give me Jesus. People's interpretation outside of what the Bible truly teaches when it contradicts only bring false hope. But I'll tell you, when you stand upon the Word of God and you read the Word and you're not looking for this interpretation or this interpretation or this particular that grabs your attention or grabs your ear or lets you hear what you want to hear because here the dangerous thing about that at this time mm -hmm. is because people can no longer gather in their local churches Many times they're scrolling through social media and you will find somebody that will preach a word to grab the attention of your itchy ears. Mm -hmm. And it may not be accurate. It may not be theological. and say how paralyzed he was, whether it was his whole body, just his legs. But make no mistake, this man was paralyzed and he needed help and he needed to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely excited about where this story is going. The Word of God is, is so powerful and so relevant. It's, it's so exciting. If you can get Jesus in the house, He can work a miracle in your life. If you can get Jesus in the house, He will meet you right where you're at. Yes. If you can get Jesus in the house, He'll mend the broken pieces yes. of your life and put them all together. Yes, He will. If you can get Jesus in the house, His presence can heal your body yes. of any sickness yes, yes. you might have. If you can get Jesus in the house, He can touch you and forgive you yes, of all of your sins. Yes. Is Jesus in your house? Or have you left him at church five weeks ago? Mm. One thing that these men were dealing with was there was an obstacle in their way. 
there was people everywhere. There was an emergency. Mm -hmm. They had this man who was sick. They knew where they needed to get him and who was capable of touching his life. But the problem was there was no way to get there. You have to understand the story here. I'm sure all four of these guys weren't just sitting there waiting for Jesus to come with the paralyzed man already in his mat and ready to go. So understand that time was of the essence. And the Bible says Jesus came back to Capernaum, entered into the house, and that the people began to show up. And so when this begins to happen, the word of mouth begins to move people quickly. By the time word got to the man, the paralyzed man, that needed to get to Jesus, they had to round up four guys. They had to get him onto his mat. And then they had to walk together and carry him into the place where Jesus was. So there's so many obstacles in this man's life that were hindering and stopping and slowing him from getting into the presence of God. But I want to tell you something, friend, is that when you've got a desire... And when there's something inside of you that wants to get somewhere, there's nothing that can stop you. And so these men, the Bible says, here they come carrying this poor guy. I wonder whose idea it was. Was it the paralyzed guy? Was it one of the guys that was carrying him around? Saying, man, I'm tired of taking care of this guy. The Bible doesn't say whose idea it was. But it does say that they showed up. Sick man in hand. And they were not going to take no for an answer. And let me tell you something about getting an appetite and a hunger and a desire to pursue Almighty God. There are some people and they sit in brokenness. And they think they have to stay there. And they think this is the state of mind that they belong in. When all you got to do is get desperate enough to break through every barrier yes. and get into the presence of Almighty God. Listen to what this story says about these men. First century Galilee, Capernaum at this time, would be constructed as we live in here today with two by fours and shingles. <laughs> But their house would be constructed of mud and sticks and that sort of a stuff. And that's what the roof would have been made out of. And so these houses were flat roofs. And a lot of times there was stairs that led up to it so they can sit inside in the cool of the day. But understand, Jesus was in the house. Jesus was in the house. There was no need for anybody to be on the roof. Because if they were to go on the roof, they would be out of the presence of Jesus. So nobody was trying to go up those stairs. Nobody was walking up them stairs. Nobody was on the rooftop. And so in desperation, somebody had a great idea. And so you begin to think about this. You begin to visualize this. You got four guys walking up stairs. 
carrying a guy on a mat. If you've ever carried a sofa upstairs with two guys, you know how hard that is. Being careful not to drop him as he was already sick. And the Bible says that these men go up to the roof. And this story, it's, it's so amazing to see the faith of these men. Can you imagine for a minute Jesus and the crowd and he's preaching the word and he's ministering to the lives around him. And all of a sudden they begin to see little particles of the roof fall down. Probably not thinking much at the beginning. But then before long a small hole in the roof opens up. Then before long, that hole gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it's large enough for a full-grown man to be sent down into the presence of Jesus. And so... Tonight, as I'm sharing with you from the Word of God, I just wonder, how desperate are you for the presence of God in your life? How desperate are you to be touched by the hand of of Almighty God in your life. These men went a completely different direction mm -hmm. to get into the presence of the Lord. It would take time. It would take sacrifice. It would take thinking outside yes. of the box. Yes. And listen to this. I wonder how many other sick people that couldn't get there fast enough mm. begin to say to themselves, "Yes, I wish I would have thought of that. I wish I would have been the one up there. But they just weren't desperate enough. Mm-hmm. Desperation, wanting a touch from God, Good stuff. will take you to a place mm, where you'll break through every barrier. Yes. You will be a man or a woman without excuse. Because mm. you will do everything in your power to get to the presence of God. Yes. Yes. I kind of liken that to during a time in my life when I was wasn't serving the Lord. And uh, if you're listening to this, you know I used to be uh, an addict, addicted, living that lifestyle. Yeah. And I remember in pursuit of what I wanted and that there was nothing that could stop me from getting my fix. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I would block everything and everyone out. I didn't care. I was going to get what I wanted. And I remember early on when I came back to the Lord and I remember the first thing that God impressed upon me as I was fighting through shame and brokenness and, 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 and wanting to give up and not wanting to continue and pursue the Lord and, and thinking it's too difficult. 
wanting to go back to that life. I remember God very clearly, very clearly telling me the same way you pursued the addictive life that you lived, the same pursuit you had to go after that. You're right. Yes. You have to pursue me mm. with that same unction, that same passion, Good that stuff. same desire. Good stuff, Jay. Good stuff. And so I look at this story and, and I see men who would not come up with an excuse, but were willing to do everything and anything to get into the presence of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And so don't you sit at home backsliding and getting separated from God and falling into the things of the world. Man, press in, pursue the Lord. Make Jesus everything. Because without Him, yes. you're absolutely nothing. Mm. So here are these men. And they lower Him down. And as he's there, sitting in front of this big crowd of people, <laughs> envision this. He just got lowered down. <laughs> and he's right there in the presence of Jesus. Let me tell you that God will never by any means ever reject you. Thank you, Lord. When you're in pursuit of Him. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter what you've done. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you've been. It's awesome. Yes. There could have been the fear. What if He looks at me? Right. And He gets angry. I mean, seeing how it's Peter's house. <laughs> and we know Peter was a hothead. Remember he cut <laughs> off the ear of the soldier? Yep, that's true. How come Peter didn't run up there and say, what are you guys doing to my house? They knew, I'm sure, in a small community like that, who lived in that home. And the character of Peter... See, we always have the same character. Whatever character you had in the world, you bring to the kingdom, but it gets saved. Mm -hmm. The problem is, too many people, they come to the kingdom, and they were hard in the world, and they come to the kingdom, they have like a bunch of girls. <laughs> bring that same tenacity. Bring that same fight. Bring that same fire. But use it for the glory and the kingdom of God. And so Peter, this is his house. These men weren't concerned that this crazy fisherman is going to come up here and tell us, no, the desire and the pursuit of Jesus outweigh everything. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible says they put this man down in the presence of the Lord. And I want you to look at the response here. The Bible says, so when they had broken through they got a breakthrough they let down the bed on which the paralytic man was lying when Jesus saw their faith he said to the paralytic man son your sins are forgiven mm -hmm. now as you continue to read what we opened up with chapter 12 one, chapter 2 1 through 12 you see the religious people get angry and they say blasphemy who alone can forgive sins but God alone and Jesus says to them would it be easier for me to say take up your bed and walk or thy sins be forgiven and so I want you to understand that getting up and walking was secondary the forgiveness of sins was primary and so, let me share with you, if you haven't already understood this, the feeling of freedom and the feeling of liberty 
when shame and fear and anger and everything that our sinful life brings with us, when all that gets pardoned, the joy, the peace, the liberty that comes with that. Taking up the mat and walking would become secondary because the first issue at hand was the condition of the man's soul. In my own life, the forgiveness of sins was the greatest thing that has ever happened to me in my life. What a powerful thing to be forgiven of our sins. Now it's interesting to see that there were Pharisees and scribes and teachers of the law around at the same time that all this is taking place. And they too could have had the opportunity to be forgiven of their sins. They too could have been liberated. They too could have been set free. They too could have experienced the joys of salvation. But their pride never allowed them to see their own sin. Their religious mindsets and their pride mm -hmm. kept them from accepting the grace, the mercy, and the salvation of God. And there are still many people who religiously get into the presence of Jesus but never get touched by His presence. Never really experience the liberty of being forgiven of their sins. Never get told to take up your mat and walk home. Spiritually speaking. Mm -hmm. Are never completely made whole. Just like the Pharisees and just like the teachers of the law pride holds people back what a story of desperation yes. that people saw the opportunity and knew that Jesus was in the house Are you desperate enough to pursue the Lord uh -huh. and to make sure that Jesus is in your house? Not just on a Friday when you're watching a live stream or on a Sunday when you're watching a live stream or on a midweek service when you're watching a live stream. What a great time for God to put us in a position. See, like I said earlier, you have to take advantage of the situation that's at hand. And so a lot of people <coughs> who are in churches and really didn't understand why. They were there for the music. They were there for the fellowship. They were there mm -hmm. because now they have friends. Right. They've never had friends before but never really in pursuit of Jesus. Right. And so today, you're laid out. And the only thing before you is, is Jesus in your house? Right. Or did you leave him at the church? <laughs> because believe it or not, Lots of people have left him at the church, and yet other people are now hungry and pursuing and looking for answers. Right. And I will tell you this, 
I have the answer. His name is Jesus. Yes. 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 So here, he's in the house. He touches this man's life. He sets him free. Something very powerful happens when a man or a woman stands before God mm -hmm. and takes responsibility for their actions and confesses with their mouth and believes in their heart mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Confessing and proclaiming, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Even as much as I pursue God now, I realize more than ever just how sinful my nature is. Just how much I have a, a bad attitude at times. And just how much I got pride at times. And just how much I, I prejudge a situation that I shouldn't at times. All of these sinful things. When men and women come to that place, Know this, that the Lord looks down on us and says, your sins are forgiven. Yes. Take up your mat and go. Mm -hmm. So for me, I remember the power of what it felt to be forgiven. I was still battling with the desire of the old life and wanting that stuff. But when the shame and the brokenness and all of those things were forgiven and I was no longer carrying that weight, I felt just like this man. Now get up and go walk. Because your sins have been forgiven. So as we close here tonight with this story about this paralyzed man who showed up at the place where Jesus was. I want you to know that if Jesus is in your house, there will be power. There will be life. There will be hope. There will be healing. There will be miracles. And so I'm sharing with you tonight <clears throat> that your home, the Bible says that we are the church, not the building. And so now let your home become the manifestation of God's presence. And when all this is over, and we come back to our corporate worship and our corporate time of prayer and our corporate time of getting into the Word of God, I'll tell you this, because some of you are going to get an understanding of what it is to truly get into the presence of the Lord. And so now, when everything gets back to normal, the way things need to be, not only are you going to get fed at the house of God, but everything in your own home is going to be different. There's going to be a new dynamic to the way that you serve the Lord and the power and the anointing that you walk in. Yes. Because Jesus is in the house. Yes. All day, every day. So I know a lot of people that I talk to have really taken advantage of this time. And I know Jesus is in your house. I know you're getting stronger. I know you're pressing in because I'm in communication with you and, and you're sharing things with me. And so all I can say to you is keep on keeping on. Yes. Amen. But maybe you're one of the ones that has just fallen by the wayside. And you're just systematically going through things. And, but at the end of the day, you're sitting there and you really feel that you're just all alone. 
ask yourself this. How is my prayer time? How is my time in the Word? Yes. How is my time in worship? Yes. So if you're feeling empty, mm. it's because you're not filling up. You're not filling up. So you can't count anymore on coming to church and and, and, and how the fellowship uplifts you and helps you. Now, it's just you, your home, your family, and you better be bringing Jesus home. Yes. Because he's all we need. We're going to close tonight in, in a word of prayer. And uh, if you're listening tonight and Jesus isn't Lord of your life, um, I'm going to say a prayer uh, that I want you to repeat with me tonight. Um, if you want to invite Jesus into your heart, um, I'm telling you, um, it, it'll change everything. You know, I'm not up here. Uh, if, if this wasn't true, I wouldn't be doing this. He's delivered me twice. <laughs> delivered me once, and I was stupid enough to go back. And Jesus says, all right, now go ahead. I'll deliver you again. Twice. I've seen his power. I've experienced his touch. I've seen his miraculous hand. I mean, God is mighty. He's powerful. He's powerful. You cannot tell me different. And so maybe you're listening tonight, and maybe Jesus Christ isn't the Lord of your life. I'm going to give you an opportunity. Uh, just repeat this prayer with me tonight, and um, accept them into your life. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross. I believe that he rose on the third day. I believe that he lives forevermore. I ask you tonight, Lord, that you would forgive me of my sins. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit tonight, God. Strengthen me. Help me, Lord. I want to serve you. I want to be in pursuit of you. Just like this man in the story we just read. Lord, I ask this in Jesus' name. We're going to close tonight in just a word of prayer as we seal our service. And thank you for listening tonight. If you if you repeated that prayer, if you've accepted the Lord, um, contact us. We'll help you. We'll talk to you. Um, we'll disciple you. We'll share with you. Because uh, it's not easy. You can't just come and give your life to God and it's over. Um, you got to come, give your life to God, and then you got to build a relationship. you got to build a foundation. Father, we thank you tonight for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word, God. Your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And so, Holy Spirit, we just ask that tonight that you would just seal this word in our hearts, God. And for those, Lord, that are in pursuit of you and those that are just uh, loving you and, and, and just coming at you with everything they have, Lord, just continue and fill them, God. Just continue and pour out your spirit upon them. And Lord, maybe those that are discouraged, maybe those that are on the side, maybe those that are hindered, God, I just want to pray right now, Holy Spirit, touch them. Holy Spirit, breathe on them a fresh anointing, a fresh fire, just a, a new desire, God, to love you, to know you, Lord. Give them a hunger, an appetite, God, for your presence. Yes, Lord, yes. Lord, we love you, and we bless you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget to tune in um, to whatever church services you have. Uh, we love you guys, and uh, we'll see you soon.